we're back. Here we are. We're going to talk about more angles and circles. There are so many places you can put angles and circles, and we're going to learn about some new locations today. So today is either Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on when you have our class. Here we go. Miss Moach is going to explain this. Okay. We're going to start off what happens when you have a tangent and an intersected chord theorem. The best way to visualize that is to look over there at the picture. You can see that there is a tangent outside of circle, the circle, and it touches the circle just at that one point A, and then there's a chord that starts at that same point, point A, and it goes out to B. That makes a couple of angles, doesn't it? It makes angle one and angle two. Now, both of those have their vertex at A, the same location, but they are different in measure. They look different to me. And you can see that because their vertex is on the circle at point A, they are considered inscribed angles. They look a little different than the ones we saw before. But they do intercept an arc. But the interesting thing about it is that the arc they intercept starts at A and goes up to B. Angle 1 goes this direction, and angle 2 goes that direction. But it's still the same theorem, same information in the theorem as our inscribed angle theorem. The measure of angle 1 is going to be half the measure of the arc AB. The measure of angle 2 is going to be half the measure of the bar arc. Bark, I'm barking. <laughs> measure BCA. Right. Okay? So, remember, anytime you have an angle with a vertex on the circle, it will always, always, always be half the intercepted arc. Cool. Um, so, if we take a look at um, num example 1, when you're finding A degrees there, that is the, the special kind of inscribed angle that Ms. Mochizuki was talking about. And it follows the same rule as the theorem we learned in the last lesson, which is angle A degrees is going to be half that intercepted arc. And that intercepted arc is 256 degrees. So angle A is going to be half of 256, which is 128. Okay, now let's look at example B, and we can see that this time they're telling us what the angle is. That angle that is the special type of inscribed angle is 106 degrees, and the arc is A. So remember, the arc is supposed to be bigger than the angle, so the angle, the theorem says the angle is half the arc. So 106 is half of A, making A double 106, or oh, 2 times 106, which is 212. 212. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to move on. So the next couple theorems are a little bit different, um, probably a, a little bit more challenging than, than the past theorems, but I know you guys got this. So um, intersecting lines and circles. So if two non-parallel lines intersect a circle, there are uh, three places where the lines can intersect. They can intersect on the circle, or they can intersect inside the circle, not or, necessarily at the center, just somewhere, anywhere inside, inside the, the circle. Inside the circle, right? Mm -hmm. Or they can intersect outside the circle. Right. Okay, so what happens when they intersect inside the circle? Well, remember, we know how to find a central angle, but this theorem is expanding our knowledge because we are not just looking at angles that have their vertex at the center, inside, but we are looking at any angle that is inside. And it turns out that it, you can calculate it by using the measure of two arcs. Let's look at angle one first. Okay, angle one intercepts arc DC. You'll notice on the other side of the figure from angle one, there is a vertical angle that intercept, intercepts arc AB. So you can think of angle one as intercepting DC and its vertical angle buddy as intercepting AB. What happens with these problems is that the measure of that angle one is going to be half the sum of those two angles. So you add them together. Now let's look at angle two, same idea. Angle two has a vertical angle buddy too. Angle two intercepts BC, the vertical angle to angle two, intercepts AD, and therefore, the measure of angle 2 is going to be half the measure of angle of arc AD and BC. 
Okay, let's put this theorem to work. Let's practice this theorem. So I'll do example A and Ms. Moach will do B. So when you take a look at this, you can see that angle X intercepts arc 80 degrees. 88. 88 degrees, mm -hmm. thanks. And um, our, its vertical angle buddy that is not marked has an intercepted arc of 86 degrees. So you can take half the sum. Mm -hmm. And so what I did here is I just added them together and divided by two because that's the same thing as times one half, right? Exactly. Right. So I'm going to add them together and divide by two and I'm going to get it. There it is, 87. So the next one's a little trickier. That's yeah. why I'm giving it to Moach. Okay, let's look at B. Right now, when you look at that 94 degrees in the middle there and the X over there, you're a little disappointed because 94 degrees and its vertical angle buddy do not give you the intercepted arcs as 80 and X. So what are you going to do? Well, this actually turns out to be a little simpler than it looks initially. When you see that 94 degrees is not in the place you want it to be, you just have to figure out the angle next to it. And guess what? They're on a line together. They are a linear pair. So if you take 94 degrees and subtract it from 180, you will get 86 degrees and you can write it at the location where you need your angle. Now we look at that 86 degree angle. We know that it intercepts the 80 degree arc and its buddy vertical angle intercepts X degrees. So we know that 86 is equal to half of 80 plus X, or you can just write 80 plus X over two. Now don't forget when you're doing algebra, when you have that fraction on the right side, the easiest way to solve this is to get rid of it by multiplying both sides by two. There we go. And when you notice, when you multiply the left side by 2, you're taking 2 times 86. But when you multiply the right side by 2, the 2's cross out. Right. So then you have a really easy, simple algebra equation. And you just subtract 80 from 172, and you get 92 degrees. So this problem had two things that were more difficult about A. It didn't give you the angle that we needed to work with. And it also was finding an arc, not the angle. So you had a little bit more algebra to work mm -hmm. with. But you should be able to do both. Remember that when we have one of these relationships, we can make any part of it the variable. Mm -hmm. And then you find it just by remembering the relationship. Yes. All right, here we go. Angle outside the circle. So like we described on the previous page of notes, the two lines can intersect inside, on, or outside. And when it's on, we already know that that's just an inscribed angle. And when it's inside, we just learned the theorem. So now we're going to learn outside. But notice there's three different ways. So they could be, for measure of angle three, they could be two secants. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Or it could be two tangents, right. measure of angle two. Or it could be a tangent and a secant. Well, three combinations. But you know what? They all are done the same way. Same way. That the key is that that vertex is on the outside. What's different is look at the arcs. When you have one or two tangents, the arcs will end up touching each other at the point of tangency. You can see for number one, for the first example on the left, they the arcs will touch each other at point C, and for angle two there, the arcs touch each other at P and R. And when you have the two separate secants, the two arcs are separate. Right. So just remember, it's whatever is intercepted by those arc, by those angle sides. Right, mm -hmm. by either the secant or the tangent. Right. And so, but it's the same thing. It's the difference of right. the arcs. And remember, it's the larger arc minus the smaller arc, because you're not going to get a negative answer. Right. All these, all these problems that when you're outside, instead of adding and dividing by two, are when you're outside, instead of adding by and dividing by two, you have to subtract and then divide by two. Right. Make sure the big one minus the small one. And the big one's always going to be the one furthest from the circle. Yeah, it's for, from, from the from, angle. From the angle. Yeah, yes. the mm -hmm. one furthest from the angle, and the smaller one is the one that's closest to the angle. And right. And again, any one of these can be the variable. Right, exactly, exactly. So I'll go through example A with you. Um, so this one, 
we already have the angle. So we got to find one of the arcs. So we know our variable is not on the left side of the equation. We know the left side of the equation. We already know the angle. So we know the measure of angle A is 35. And 35 is going to be half the difference between 100 and X, right? Mm-hmm. So we have a little bit more algebra to do here. And like Moch said in the last example, we can multiply both sides by 2. 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. And then here, what I'm going to do is just switch places. I'm going to subtract the 70 and bring the X to the other side. There you go. There Not you hard. Go. Yeah. And so the next one's a little bit more straightforward. Go with mm -hmm. it, Moch. This is the easier type because you're going to follow that theorem exactly. You are looking for the angle whose vertex is outside the circle. So you're just going to subtract the t larger arc minus the smaller one and divide it by 2. Okay, so it's half of 90 minus 20, which is 35. Awesome. So those were two secants. The next one is two tangents. And this one's tricky because you don't know what that other arc is. But if we know that part of the circle is x, the rest of the circle is 360 minus x, yes. right? So there we go. So now we do. This is a little tricky. So which one's larger, the x or the 360 minus x? Which oh, one's it's got to be the 360 minus x because it's the one that's further from the right. angle. So we're going to say 60 because we know the angle like we did in example A. We know the angle. So we're going to say 60 equals 1 half the larger arc, which is 360 minus x, minus the smaller arc, which is x. So you've got a little bit of tricky here. And then... Minus x minus x. Oh, my goodness. But you need them both because 360 minus x is one arc and the other x is the other arc. Right. And so then I did two steps in one here. I, I did minus x minus x is minus 2x. And then I multiply both sides by 2. So I kind of, you know, skipped a little step here. I hope you're okay with that. So when I multiply both sides by 2, I get 120 on the other side. And the 2s cross out on the right side. And then minus x minus x is minus mm -hmm. 2x. And then the rest is a breeze. I think it's a breeze for you guys. I brought the 2x to the other side and the 120. Mm -hmm. Subtracted it from the 360 and divided by 2. But I know you guys know your algebra at this point. Yeah, they're good at that. Cool. We okay. are good. Okay, so that's probably one of the harder ones of those kind of problems. All right, let's see what's next. I'm not sure. What's we're... next is going to make that problem we just did that was hard turn out to be kind of easy. Wow. Cool. Okay, because it turns out that that type of angle, when you have the two tangents, mm -hmm. has a special name. It's called a circumscribed angle. It's an angle whose sides are tangent to the circle. So what happens is when you do that, you know, we would have this 360 minus X and the X every single time. Well, there is a shortcut to it, okay? The measure of that circumscribed angle always turns out to be 180 degrees minus the measure of the central angle that intercepts the same arc. Right. So if you know arc AB or the central angle ACB, they measure the same. Therefore, all you would have to do is 180 degrees minus that That's measure. That's cool, Moj. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to point out, so you've got inscribed angles and now you've got circumscribed angles. Right. So know what a circumscribed angle is. And it is the angle outside the circle where you have two tangents. Mm -hmm. um, so I just threw in a little example in here. What if angle C was 150? What would angle D be, Moj? Well, all you have to do is subtract that 150 from 180. So it's going to be 30. Really easy. If we were to do it 360 minus X and X every time, we'd have so much more work. Look how much simpler this is. I know. So we're going to get to some examples. Um, okay, so this one's a straightforward example. Um, Moch, what is X equal? I okay. bet you can get it. Really oh, quick. X is equal to 180 minus 24, which is 46. If I can do it quickly, am I right? Yeah, she's better than me. At getting oh, it's 56. I'm oh! wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so the next one's a little bit tricky. There's two ways to think about it. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I drew a central angle. 
That's a good idea. So I drew the central angle. And I know that central angle is supplementary to 42, mm -hmm. right? And also, that central angle is the same measure as arc AB. Yes, it is. And arc AB is twice of X, ang X which is angle C, it, right? Because it's an inscribed angle. Right. So I... I called it Y, but I could also call it 2X, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to find Y by subtracting it from 180. Um, again, I'm okay with you guys going straight to knowing it's 138. And then since that's 138... So that, is the arc. So is the arc. Mm -hmm. And then the inscribed angle is half of that, right? Exactly. So the alternate method you could do is, and so first we've got our answer as 169. 69. Just plain, Just plain 69. Mm -hmm. um, so the other option is to say that that arc is 2x, like I talked about before, mm -hmm. and then just say 180 minus 2x equals 42. So whichever one seems easier to you. Yeah, exactly. Um, of okay. course, you'll get the same answer. Right, exactly. All right, here we go. Last problem. Oh, this one is a little application problem. There is a circular cabinet in the dining room. That'd be kind of hard to fit in most rooms, yeah. but we could, I guess. Looking in from another room at point A, you estimate that you can see an arc of the cabinet about 100 degrees. What is the measure of angle A. Zoom. So uh, we had a little bit of an interruption, so Moch is going to um, read the problem again. Okay, there is a circular cabinet in the dining room. Looking in from another room at point A, you estimate that you can see an arc of the cabinet of about 100 degrees. What is the measure of angle A formed by the tangents to the cabinet? So notice we are finding the measure of an angle that is outside the circle and has two tangents to the circle. So, since we know that the arc closest to that angle is 100 degrees, and we know that a circle all the way around is 360, it's easy to come up with the arc that's further away, 260. So now we can just use our theorem, and that's that the measure of angle A is half the difference because it's outside the right. circle. So half that difference is going to be at one half of 160 or 80 degrees. All right. Great job. So you guys can work on your big ideas and you could work on um, the classworks that are posted. Um, and again, like I said, hopefully you've read your email and you uh, have learned how we're posting everything for you so it's easier. Make sure you email us if you have any questions. Exactly. We're yes, happy email to help. us. And, um, you know, and if we have any office hours on Zoom, we will, you can an answer questions. Okay. And yeah, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. That'll be in the email we're going to type up or that you've already read, hopefully. Yeah. Have a great day. Okay, let me go over and talk to Janice. Okay. I think, I think that if we just have them do big ideas, they're going to do.